We're on the road in Spokane, Washington, less than three miles from the headquarters of a secretive CIA contractor that played a key role in developing the Bush administration's interrogation methods. The firm, Mitchell, Jessen and Associates, is named after the two military psychologists who founded the company, James Mitchell and Bruce Jessen. Beginning in 2002, the CIA hired the psychologists to train interrogators in brutal techniques, including waterboarding, sleep deprivation and pain. Both of the men had years of military training in a secretive program known as SEER, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, Escape, which teaches soldiers to endure captivity in enemy hands. Mitchell and Jessen reverse-engineered the tactics taught in SEER training for use on prisoners held in the CIA's secret prisons. The declassified torture memos released last week relied heavily on the advice of Mitchell and Jessen. In one memo, Justice Department attorney Jay Bybee wrote, quote, "...based on your research into the use of these methods at the SEER school in consultation with others with expertise in the field of psychology interrogation, you do not anticipate that any prolonged harm would result from the use of the waterboard. Well, today we're going to take a detailed look at Mitchell Jessen's role. We're joined now by three journalists who've closely followed the story. Catherine Eban joins us from New York. Her 2007 article in VanityFair.com, Rorschach and Awe, gave a detailed account of the role of James Mitchell and Bruce Jessen. Mark joins us. Mark Benjamin joins us from Washington, D.C., national correspondent for Salon.com. He wrote about Mitchell and Jessen in his 2007 article called The CIA's Torture Teachers. And here in Spokane, I'm joined by Karen Steele. She's a former reporter at the Spokesman Review, where she covered the story. We called Mitchell Jessen Associates, based here in Spokane, not far from these studios, to invite them on the show. But, well, we did not hear back from them. Mitchell and Jessen have avoided speaking to the media for years. Two years ago, they released a statement to Vanity Fair that read, quote, we're proud of the work we've done for our country. Well, why don't we begin first with Mark Benjamin in Washington. How did you first hear of Mitchell and Jessen, Mitchell, Jessen and Associates? I first heard of uh, those two psychologists um, when I was doing my reporting a couple years ago from, frankly, from some of their associates and people that worked with them in the military. And their associates were concerned because this SEER training that you referred to, it's not designed to, to, to be an interrogation tool. It's designed to teach soldiers to resist, frankly, um, what are tools developed by communists um, that, uh, used by the, the Koreans, for example, during the Korean War to force false confessions out of soldiers. And so we were teaching our soldiers how to, the SEER training teaches soldiers how to resist that kind of abuse. The reason I, it was brought to my attention is some of these Mitchell and Jessen's colleagues were very, very concerned um, that these guys had, quote, gotten their hands dirty, unquote, by reverse engineering these things. Frankly, their colleagues thought it was a very stupid idea for obvious reasons. Hmm. Um, uh, Catherine Eben, tell us a little about these two men, exactly who they are and what you found in this very comprehensive piece uh, that you did called War Shock and Awe, the first piece. Um, uh, thanks very much, and it's nice to be here, Amy. Um, you know, these were, these were guys who have been described to me as op docs. Uh, they were, you know, PhDs who wanted to be sort of in the operational uh, arena, uh, which is a very seductive arena to be in, but effectively they were teachers and overseers of a SEER program where they were just monitoring, um, you know, the well-being of troops. Uh, they weren't scientists. They had no data, um, according to my sources, to show that if you reverse engineered these tactics, they would be effective in eliciting information. Um, so, you know, the description that I got um, also from colleagues of theirs is that these guys were wannabes. You know, they were wannabe operational psychologists like, uh, uh, you know, the Jodie Foster's character in Silence of the Lambs, and they weren't. But apparently, and now we really see the extent of it, they were very convincing. Uh, 
in selling the, you know, the use of these tactics to the CIA. And I guess it was a moment in time when um, our government was really desperate for any kind of solutions. But the fact that they landed on this without any data to justify its use, without any proof of effectiveness, is really what was remarkable to me in my reporting. Uh, Mark Benjamin, uh, well, both of you actually have now written new pieces. Um, Mark, as you look at the torture memos, how does Mitchell Jessen fit in, these new documents that have been released? Um, well, pretty much unredacted. There are, uh, you know, there, it, it is blacked out, especially around the names of the people involved. Well, we already knew. Um because of the reporting like mine and Catherine's, how crucial these psychologists were in developing the CIA's torture program. I, th I think what the documents show is how crucial they were in carrying it out. In other words, if you look through these memos, these Justice Department memos, the whole rationale, you know, or, or the defense of the program from the Justice Department is that it's safe, you know. In other words, it's not torture according to doctors. And there are doctors there to monitor what's going on. There are doctors there to make sure that the person being interrogated doesn't die on them. And they have data allegedly showing that, you know, see this training, when we do it to soldiers, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't kill them and it doesn't make them, you know, crazy from the, from the, from the abuse they do. Uh, during training, and so it must be okay. I mean, in other words, I think that I don't think you can overemphasize the extent to which the Justice Department relied on the um, advice and consent and participation of these psychologists, not just in designing the program, but carrying it out and arguing that it was safe and that it wasn't torture. I mean, they were an absolutely vital part of this of this program, I mean, in, either in the room while these people were being tortured or watching on videotape. Uh, Karen Doran Steele, uh, you were writing for the Spokesman Review, and after um, Mark Benjamin's piece came out, uh, you did your first. Of course, this is a local story. We're broadcasting here at the PBS station in uh, Spokane, KSPS, that's run by the Spokane Public Schools. Not three miles from here is the American Legion building. Uh, tell us uh, what you learned and the reports that you started to do here in Spokane. Yeah, after we read uh, Mark's piece, we um, did some research, Bill Moreland and I, on who these guys are. Uh, we pulled their corporate records and other records, and we found out that they had 120 employees, and they opened their rather large offices here in March of 2005, although they'd had contracts with the CIA prior to that. Um, we learned that they came out of the SEER program, as has been discussed and that they lived here because Spokane is a good place to live. They had many military connections here. These programs are still very big, the SEER program at Fairchild Air Force Base. And the... How uh, far is Fairchild Air Force Base from here? It's just about uh, three miles west of town. It's very, very close. This is a big Air Force community. And the agency, the overarching agency that runs the SEER program nationwide also has a major um, facility here. It's called the Joint Personnel Recovery Agency. And sources within JPRA knew a lot about Mitchell and Jessen. They said they were self-promoters, they were cowboys, they disapproved of the kind of techniques and they're cozying up to the CIA. Um, but they told us that they live here because it's a nice place to live. And uh, even though their mailing address is uh, Langley, Virginia, they're based in Spokane. I understand Mitchell doesn't live here anymore, but That's Jessen correct. does. That's right. And why was Sear big at Fairchild? Sear was big at Fairchild because every pilot in the U.S. Air Force is required to go through this uh, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape pro programming uh, to learn what they might be subject to if they ever fell into the hands of an enemy that didn't follow the Geneva Accords. And of course, we know that this tech, these techniques were reversed uh, by Mitchell and Jessen uh, for the CIA and the black sites overseas. Um, we also followed rather closely the debate within the American Psychological Association about the ethics of psychologists participating in sites where they were arguably doing harm, not doing no harm, as their, um, as their um, guidelines say. And um, we, APA distanced themselves from Mitchell and Jessen, said they were not APA members, but we found out that one of their board members, Joseph Mazzarato, uh, a moderato, excuse me, who's an emeritus psych 
ecology professor at Oregon Health Sciences University in Portland, is a former president of the APA. And so after we, we broke that story, then the APA could no longer say there weren't ties between this organization um, and their organization. Uh, we're going to break, then we're going to come back to this discussion. Our guest in studio a former reporter with the Spokesman Review. Um, like many newspapers in this country, there have been a number of buyouts and layoffs at the paper here. Uh, Karen Doran Steele uh, is a George Polk Award-winning reporter for her work on the Hanford Reservation. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but today we're talking in light of the memos that have just been released by the U.S. government about Jessen Mitchell, a uh, psychologist who run a firm here well, that are involved in the coercive interrogations around uh, the world. Our guests in New York, Catherine Eban, and in Washington, D.C., Mark Benjamin.